There has always been unfinished business with the doomed Hadley's Hope colony. Ripley, along with Newt, Hicks, and Bishop, escaped its destruction, leaving a mushroom cloud behind. Viewers of the film series may assume nothing but a crater was left behind, as the location was never revisited. The extended universe, however, tells a different story. A few different stories, in fact, depending on the material. The concept of a return to LV-426 after the blast from the atmosphere processor first took shape with the original Aliens comic series. The second 1990 issue of Aliens, Book 3, also known as Earth War, saw Ripley go back to the planetoid against her will with a new group of marines 13 years later. While the colony wasn't explored, the derelict ship, while damaged by the blast, was still very much intact and there were still surviving aliens. The much maligned 2013 video game Aliens Colonial Marines also took that concept on, this time in a very direct way. Much of the plot and action of this story deals directly in the wake of Hadley's Hope's destruction. There, Xenomorphs were also found to have survived, and some with mutations caused by the nuclear fallout. And now in 2021, we have a new story that is aimed to explore the aftermath of Hadley's Hope in the one-shot comic from Marvel, Aliens Aftermath. The comic was released to commemorate the 35th anniversary of the film Aliens, and appropriately enough features a story set 35 years after those events. Aside from the location itself, there are other connections to Aliens, though for the purposes of this video I won't be going too deep into spoilers. The events of Aliens' aftermath take place in the year 2214. Wayland yutani has considered their past exploits on LV-426 not just a failure, but an embarrassment, and have devoted years to covering it all up. The featured characters in Aftermath, the group of extremist journalists known as Renegade XM, track down the location and find what's become of the planetoid all these decades later. Acheron appears much different since we've last seen it. It is now a barren, snow-encompassed location with a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius. Readings from Renegade XM's ship determine the site is still radioactive, with radiation levels at 600 millisieverts per hour. The group also discovers the remainders of the atmosphere processor and piece together what has happened. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 megatons of explosive energy, an annihilation event. A morbid snapshot has been preserved of the battle between marines and aliens that took place in 2179. Bodies of both humans and aliens can be seen in the colony's frozen ruins. The Renegade XM crew is perplexed by their findings, but knowing Wayland yutanis shady practices as well as they do, not surprised to find evidence of such an ominous event. And of course, as we've seen in the previous post-Fallout concepts of Hadley's Hope, aliens have indeed survived after all these years. This time around, we're introduced to a new type of xenomorph. It glows a cold blue and has seemingly adapted to life in a sub-zero environment. It has some different attributes from what we've seen before, but is as deadly as ever, and spells certain doom for the intruders. The new Xenomorph variant was the highlight for me when it comes to this comic. I always like to see how the creature can be explored in different ways and what factors can lead to such a metamorphosis. Here we see an alien that has changed not because of its host, or because of any genetic tampering, but purely by its environment. Aside from the Alien vs. Predator film, which took place in a pyramid in Antarctica, we haven't seen much of how the Xenomorph could adapt in a very cold environment. And added to that, one that is radioactive. I think that's something worth exploring, and I think it's fine enough to pursue in a somewhat inconsequential one-off story. But maybe we will see some consequences down the road, maybe certain seeds of ideas are being planted and the reactions are being tested. We could possibly see certain characters and certain plot elements of Aftermath play into future issues. It's hard to tell at this point since this is only the second original story from Marvel Comics, the first being Alien Bloodlines, which at the time of this video has yet to conclude. They're playing around with ideas, I think, and they're trying to see what works. I like what they've laid out conceptually with this issue, but personally I feel they don't need to lean in too hard with the connections to aliens as they do. I think a group of explorers finding LV-426 is interesting enough without all the nods to aliens and certain ways of tying characters together. One thing I really have to praise though is the art. For this issue, it was done by David Wachter. After some of the questionable trace jobs we've seen in the Alien Bloodlines issues by Salvador La Roca, this was a breath of fresh air. I'd really like to see more from Wachter, and hopefully much less from LaRocca. Have you had a chance to check out Aliens Aftermath? I'd love to know your opinion in the comments section. 
what did you think of the connections to aliens that were made? Did they work for you, or do you consider them maybe a little forced? And what did you think of the new Xenomorph? Share your thoughts below. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe for all the latest videos from the channel. A special thanks goes out to Alisane, Queen Tier of the Patreon Hive. A very special thanks to Lady Anne in the Ellen Ripley Tier of Excellence. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.